Now we're going to do the electrolysis of uh, aqueous HNO3, which is an acid, and we've uh, discussed previously that acid, bases, and salts are all electrolytes. So obviously there is going to be electrolysis taking place in this reaction. Uh, let's draw, let's do this quickly, a rough diagram. You'll we'll have a beaker, and this beaker is going to have two inert electrodes in them, made from graphite and uh, or platinum. So these are two electrodes connected to a battery. This side is the negative side. It's the cathode. Whereas this one is the positive side. This is the anode. And uh, just as before, electrons are being pushed from the battery at this end and they are being pulled from this end. And our electrolyte contains HNO3 aqueous. Now, if you look at HNO3 aqueous, uh, you'll see that it has two ions. One is H plus one. So H plus one is going to get attracted to the negative uh, terminal, and NO3 minus one, which is the negative ion, is going to get attracted to the positive terminal, the anode. So you have H plus one and NO3 minus one coming from this HNO3. And since it's aqueous, there would be two ions coming from water as well. One would be H plus one, and the other one would be OH minus one. Now moving on the uh, on uh, now discussing what's going to happen at cathode first. Uh, so which ions are going to get attracted to cathode? There, there's only one ion actually, which is H plus one. The, the acid HNO3 is also producing H plus 1 and the water is also producing H plus 1. So you're left with just one ion. And if you, if you just have one ion, so this is the ion that's going to gain electrons from the battery. So it's going to gain electrons and it's going to form a neutral hydrogen atom. And since it's diatomic, it's going to be H2. So you would need two H plus 1 and each would gain two electrons to form H2. So this is your equation at cathode. Similarly, your equation at anode would be you have OH minus 1 and you have NO3 minus 1 ions and previously as we have discussed it's always OH minus 1 that loses electrons apart from those exceptions and those exceptions don't apply over here so the equation at uh, anode would be OH minus 1 would be losing electrons 1 OH minus 1 has one extra electron 4 OH minus 1 would have a total of four extra electrons. It's going to lose all those electrons and it's going to form two H2O and O2. So we have these two equations. This is the reaction at cathode and this is your reaction at anode. Now um, we need to balance the number of electrons gained and lost. The two electrons being gained over here, reduction is happening over here and there are four electrons being lost over here. Oxidation is happening over here but the electrons lost and gain are not equal. So I multiply the entire top equation by 2. If I do that, there would be 4H plus 1. If I multiply, there would be 4 electrons being gained and this would be, there would be 2H2 being formed. So, I'm, so the number of electrons gained and lost are now equal. So I'll just, uh, to write the overall equation, I'll simply add up the two equations, the left hand sides and the right hand sides. So uh, by, uh, I'll start adding up. This is 4H plus 1. This is 4OH minus 1. 4 electrons and minus 4 electrons, they both cancel out. And you're left with, there would be 2H2 on the right hand side. And there would be 2H2O. And there would be 1. Oh, so this over here is your overall equation. Now we're going to see what's, uh, uh, what are we going to observe at anode and cathode. At cathode, what's happening? There's H2 gas being formed. So at cathode, you're going to see bubbles of H2 gas being formed. On the other hand, at anode, you'll have oxygen gas uh, being given off. So you'll see bubbles of oxygen gas being formed at anode. So this H plus 1. Uh, that is turning into H2 and that is being released as a gas. So there wouldn't be any more H plus 1 ions left or there would be lesser H plus 1. And then on the other hand, there would be OH minus 1 ions leaving from the other end because they're converting into oxygen gas. So you're left with HNO3. And what's going to happen to the electrolyte? It's going to become, uh, the electrolyte becomes
it becomes more concentrated. Why would it become more concentrated? Because H plus 1 and OH minus 1 were coming from water. As they are discharged, as they convert into H2 gas and O2 gas, there would be lesser water left in the solution. So as the co water content in the solution decreases, the concentration would increase. In this lecture, we're going to study the electrolysis of uh, CuSO4 aqueous, which is copper sulfate. And uh, we're again using inert uh, inert electrodes. Uh, now, this is a very important electrolysis uh, that a number of questions actually come on this uh, topic. So, we're going to do the electrolysis of CuSO4 aqueous. It's the same uh, exact idea. There's not there's no difference actually. Uh, let's say I'll, I'll draw a beaker and that beaker is going to have two electrodes dipped into it and they would be connected to the terminals of a battery and the electrolyte it would be dipped into an electrolyte these are inert electrodes which are made from graphite or they are made from platinum uh, now your electrolyte would contain CuSO4 would have Cu2 plus ions and SO4 minus 2 ion. This over here is the negative terminal, this is the cathode and this over here is the positive terminal, it is the anode. So Cu2 plus and SO4 2 minus ions, this is the negative terminal, this is the positive terminal. The negative terminal is going to attract Cu2 plus because it's positive and the positive terminal is going to attract SO4 minus 2 because it is negative and since it's aqueous there would be two ions coming from water as well. One would be H plus 1 and it's going to get attracted to cathode as well and then there's OH minus 1 it's going to get attracted to uh, our anode. So these four ions are coming. Let's jump to what's going to happen at cathode first. Now if you look at cathode it's going to attract two ions. One is Cu plus 2 and the other one is H plus 1 and the battery is pushing electrons from this side so uh, and it's pulling electrons from the other side. Now only one of them Cu2 plus or H plus 1 which one has a higher tendency to gain an electron it's uh, you have to look at the reactivity series and if I look at the reactivity series this over here is my reactivity series you can see that the competition is between the competition is between Cu and H and Cu is less reactive so Cu is the one that's going to gain electrons because it's always the less reactive uh, element that ends up gaining electrons so it's Cu2 plus that would end up gaining electrons so I'll write down the equation it's Cu plus 2 and it has a deficiency of 2 electrons it's going to gain 2 electrons and it's going to form Cu. So that's my equation at cathode. And what's going to happen at anode? At anode, I have two ions. One is OH minus one, and the other one is SO4 minus two. So I have these two ions, and uh, let's go back and revise. It's always OH minus one that loses electrons except Cl minus 1, I minus 1 or Br minus 1 are present in concentrated amounts but they're not present at all. So it's OH minus 1 that ends up losing electrons and we're going to write down the equations for OH minus 1 which would end up losing 4 electrons and it's going to form 2H2O and that's going to be an oxygen molecule as well. So we have these two equations. One is this one and the other one is this one though that one is at cathode Cu2 plus plus two electrons gives you Cu whereas at anode you have 4OH minus one minus four electrons gives you 2H2O plus O2 now the last thing I'm going to try and write the I'm going to try and write the overall equation now now the only difference in this overall equation is uh, there's no actual difference the same thing the number of electrons gained and lost must be equal so I multiply the entire above equation by so there would be four electrons now, two Cu2 plus and two Cu. Now the number of electrons gained and lost are exactly the 
same. So I'm going to add the left hand and the right hand side. So it's uh, 2 Cu plus 2 plus 4 OH minus 1 and that would give me 2 Cu plus 2 H2O plus O2. That is my overall equation now. Now the last point about observations. It's very important. There are a lot of questions coming on the observations of this particular electrolysis. What what would you see at cathode? At cathode, you will see copper forming. This copper would end up getting deposited onto the cathode. It's going to turn into copper metal. Cu is Cu when it's neutral, it's a metal. So at cathode, what you're going to see is copper has a pink color. So you're going to see a pink deposit which forms because copper metal is forming. On the other hand, at anode, you'll have OH minus one, that's oxygen gas. Uh, so you'll see bubbles of gas. You can write effervescence, which also means uh, bubbles of gas being formed. And what's left behind in the solution? You have Cu plus 2, that is being removed from one end, and you have OH minus 1, that is being removed from the other end, the anode. So what's left behind is H plus 1 and SO4 minus 2. So the electrolyte that would change from, it was CuSO4 aqueous before, and that would change to H2 SO4 aqueous because you had. Uh, Cu and, SO, uh, Cu and OH ions are removed, so you are left with H plus 1 and SO4 minus 2 ions. In this example, we are going to do the electrolysis of silver nitrate aqueous and using inert electrodes. Uh, we are going to draw the diagram first. Uh, there is going to be a beaker which would contain the electrolyte. There would be inert electrodes. dipped into it, connected to the terminals of a battery. This side is the negative cathode and the other side is the anode which is the positive terminal connected to the battery. The battery is going to push electrons from this side and it's going to pull away electrons from the other side and the electrolyte contains uh, which ions? The silver nitrate aqueous. So it has Ag plus 1 and NO3 minus 1 and then it's aqueous so there would be two ions coming from water as well H plus 1 and OH minus 1. Let's quickly recap and see what's going to happen at cathode first. At cathode, cathode is negative, it attracts the two positive ions which are Ag plus 1 and uh, H plus 1. And which one is going to end up gaining electron or getting reduced? It's uh, going to be the less reactive of the two. So we look at the reactivity series again. Uh, let's quickly recap and look at the reactivity series. Here's the reactivity series. Now, Silver is over here and H is over here. So silver is definitely the least reactive. So it's the one that's going to gain electrons. So we have silver plus one. It's going to end up gaining electrons. It's going to gain one electron. That's going to form Ag. Silver metal would be formed. Similarly, what's going to happen at the other end at anode? At anode, you have two ions. One is NO3 minus 1. Anode is positive, it attracts the negative ions. So it's going to attract NO3 minus 1 and OH minus 1. And which one has a higher tendency to lose an electron or get oxidized? It's OH minus, always OH minus 1. So OH minus 1 ends up losing electron. Remember the equation for OH minus 1, it's OH minus 1 minus 4 electrons. That would give me 2H2O plus. O2. So I have these two equations. One is at cathode and the other one is at anode. So I have these two equations.
Now I need to balance the number of electrons gained and lost. So one electron is being gained at cathode and then the four electrons being lost at. And so I would need to multiply the above equation by four. So I would need to multiply this entire equation by four. So it would be four electrons being gained in total. Now I'll just simply to write the overall equation, I would simply add the left hand side which in this case is 4Ag plus 1 plus 4OH minus 1 minus 1 plus 4 electrons minus 4 electrons they get cancelled out you have 4Ag on the right hand side plus 2H2O plus O2 so that's your overall equation and now I'm going to discuss a few things about the observations that we can make in this particular electrolysis. So at uh, cathode, what's happening at cathode, silver metal, a neutral silver metal is formed. So you're going to see a silvery deposit at cathode. What's going to happen at anode, at anode, uh, if you, if I, you, you see oxygen gas being formed at anode. So bubbles of oxygen gas or bubbles of gas or effervescence would be seen at anode. That would be your observation. And if I look at the electrolytes, silver ions are lost and OH minus one ions leave the electrolyte. So what's remaining in the electrolyte, the electrolyte changes the electrolyte was AgNO3 aqueous and it changes into this H plus 1 NO3 minus 1 ions left behind so it changes into HNO3 aqueous so that is the change that occurs to the electrolyte 